Dude, I'm starting... That's why I put Volt in. I'm starting to believe in Volt, man. What even are they? This is like a new party, man. They're very they're, they're very young. People always tell me about them. The party Volt was founded March 2018 as the first natural offshoot of the pan-European citizens movement of Volt Europa. Volt advocates reforming the European Union by strengthening the European institutions and continuing the process of European integration. That sounds really good, man. Pussy! That sounds really good. Who are they? I genuinely don't know. I read a lot about them, but... I, I, unfortunately, I always believe if a party is not gonna get 5%, if you don't get 5%, you're not allowed to go to the German government. Why vote for them anyway, right? Which is kind of a dumb thinking, right? Like, I don't vote for them because they're not gonna get 5% anyway. But they have to start somewhere, right? Let me, let me take a look at this. This video was suggested by TLDR viewers in the topic suggestion form. The link to the form is in the description of every video. So whenever you think of a good idea, be sure to chuck it our way. In our videos, we fairly often look at specific parties operating in specific European countries. Thank you, never what think we of often it. don't do is look at parties that operate across the European continent. So today we're going to take a look at Volt, a pan-European political party. The question is, are they aiming too high? Is it possible to form a government in multiple countries? But if a party gets 0.5%, well, they, we they first will get taxpayer money. Exactly yeah. what Volt stands Thank you, Tech of Doom. Volt parties and thank you, Crocs. Thank you, guys. All the communists are not subbing to me because I'm a left wing. I did With not think I'm getting left. I had a lot of conservative answers. Are reaching their limits. As the world is getting more globalized, they argue that the solutions need to transcend national borders. And nowhere is this more clear and I agree than when it comes to policies much. surrounding climate change. I heavily disagree. They want to uh, uh, I heavily agree. Sorry. Sorry. I heavily agree with this. Let's see. Let's see. People from using carbon intensive products. Something Linked new and fresh. They also want to stop subsidies on fossil fuels and increase the energy saving targets from 30 to 40%. And this okay. strategy of every country doing their bit and working together towards a common aim can be seen throughout their manifesto. For example, on migration. They want to reform the way that the EU deals with asylum seekers and migrants coming from outside the EU. This would be aimed at ensuring that more countries took on more asylum seekers, as they claim that a small handful have been taking the vast majority. Fully true. But the problem is what they don't see is this is going to lead to a lot of trouble. Look at uh, Poland, Hung Hungary and Austria, right? They are like, fuck you, I'm not taking shit. And then drama happens and then the EU gets destabilized, for example, by Hungary, because they don't want to fucking work with us. Along Germany took one point- What?! We took 1.4 million? Fuck all of you, do your fucking job! Jesus! Inside this, they also want to increase and improve legal pathways into Europe. And all of these policies are designed to work if only a policy like this, European you're gonna get in a lot of trouble. You're so gonna lose a lot of it's clear by reading their manifesto that they're aiming to make a federal Europe. Fully agree with this. One has a more powerful central government. Fully agree with this. Capable of compelling constituent nations. In the future, Europe has to unite to keep up with the USA and China. And also, it's a progressive step. I think the human race isn't ready for it. I think Europe is ready for it. We're all still way too fucking retarded. But I think in a in a, in a in a good future that uses their brain. Europe should unite more. I, I am a big fan of that. I think it's the future. And it doesn't matter what you think, it is the future. Abide by the rules they traditionally set themselves. Nowhere is this more clear than their commitment to create the position of a European Prime Minister. A figure that will be accountable... I disagree with that. Once again, I, 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 I have this idea, I, I have this belief that, that the problems in 2021 in a globalized world are so massive and complex that the system of a one individual leadership is overhauled a country as complex as the u.s or germany being led by one single person yet yeah, yes there's checks and balances but one single human which is open to flaws and mistakes which is just human it's not modern anymore in my opinion i think countries i personally believe you shouldn't have a single leader anymore because they will always be open to the human flaws to the european parliament However, there are other policies that we would expect from more traditional parties who aim to just be elected in a single country. And these policies show them as a very socially liberal party. For example, they want to legalize sex work, they want to legalize euthanasia, and they want to look into the alternatives for prisons, as well as... Pri what? Wait, wait, what just happened? Very socially liberal party. For example, they want to legalize sex... I mean, yeah, why not? Sure. Yeah. They do it anyway. Work. 
They want to legalize euthanasia. What? I, 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 I'm dumb. What is euthanasia? Oh, Sterbehilfe. Ah, it's just suicide. Ah, okay. Sorry, I thought it's something else. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. If you want to suicide, if you want to die, you should have the right. I agree. And and they want to look into the alternatives for prisons. Alternatives for prisons. I don't know about that. I've, I'm not educated on that. I, I, I'm as well as up. prioritizing other sanctions. They also advocate for a digital revolution. What if I kill someone? I just pay 10k and I'm fine. Digital revolution sounds great, right? Revolution. With policies committed to making more paperless administration systems, expanding the Estonian model of e-government, and expanding e-healthcare systems. So that's a quick overview of what Volt stand for. And before anyone they leaves a good, comment man. about how we've missed a fundamental policy of Volt, oh, look, please chat. consider that this is a 10 minute video and their manifesto is 217 pages long. Now let's move on to whether they've had I might actually give them my yet. vote, dude. Fuck. Well, Volt is actually only four years old, having been founded on the 29th of March 2017, which just happens to be the day that the UK formally triggered Article 50 and started the Brexit process. Nonetheless, they've already had some Fuck electoral care, right? successes. For example, they've won three seats in the 2021 Dutch general election. According to one report, Volt was this successful begins, due right? to last-minute politicization. Bad, dude. dude, imagine they will get into the German government, man. Well, wait, someone said, chat, if they get 0 0.5, they get taxpayer money? ...of European integration. And interestingly, polls show that... So if I vote for them, I help them? To... Is that true? Explain Germany to me. If a German party gets 0.5%, they are eligible to receive taxpayer funding. So if you vote for this party to help them get 0 0.5%, you help them get money and get stronger, right? Or someone just said that in chat. I actually have no idea. I want to be that honest. Dude, I might actually just vote for them. Dude, the Valomat actually triggered me to change my vote. The more votes, the more taxpayer money they get. Vote did best with highly educated Every Dutch vote voters, is 87 cents. Specifically within the 18 to 34 year old bracket. Volt has also elected one member in the European Parliament, and this came in the 2019 European parliamentary elections in Germany. Volt's elected member, Damien Bosselage, was at they the top points of Volt's like list, 16 and as they passed the threshold, became their representative in Brussels. In fact, although there are no other voters in the national German government, there are a number in various councils across really? the country. Really? I didn't actually know that. So, despite being so new, they have had some electoral success. But a question that's likely burning in your mind is could Volt or some other pan-European party actually end up forming a government across national borders? In essence, are we about to see a Spanish and Portuguese MP become one and the same person? Well, to put it bluntly, no, not. No. no. And that's because, legally speaking, Volt in Spain is a completely different legal entity to Volt in Italy, which in turn is a different entity from Volt in the UK. I mean, that's even a dumb so question to raise. So sit under the same umbrella should, and brand the name, should still have their own clearly culture some differences. And stuff. It's also worth distinguishing the difference between the likes of Volt as a pan-European political party and political parties at the European level known more informally as Euro parties. Euro parties are the respective groupings of domestic political parties in the EU yeah. and broadly have That is once again to uh, I understand that groupings in the European Parliament there's kind of collections, right? For example, I I listen to there's a German comedian called Nico Zemsroth and he was voted into the European Parliament as a joke, it was a meme. He works now, he gets 10k a month. And he works for one of these I don't know which one it is. And he he uh, he always um, makes reports on what happens there. He tells us about it, and he says he has one of these parties. I don't know which one. And they tell him what to do. They tell him what to vote for. They tell him everything, right? And he just hangs out. He just goes there and he makes his uh, signature and he goes home and gets ten k a month, which is who parties in the yeah. EU. And if there's a vote, they tell him what to vote for. And three shit. levels. National constituent member parties, a transnational party organization, and then a political grouping within the European Parliament. Take, for example, the European People's That's Party. That's a dog, he gets 10k a month. The EPP yeah, he does, is right? Currently they, the they get like 10k or even more, I think. Grouping, they get an office, everything. Seats in, the European in Germany, there's a joke party called Deep Party, and they got so many votes, two people are in the Parliament. Now. And they're actually, they're actually writing books, and they're exposing corruption inside the Parliament. They're actually doing a good job. Even though it was for a joke. Yet, when EU citizens went to the polls back in 2019, they didn't vote directly for the EPP, 
nor EPP candidates. Despite having its own leader, policies and manifesto, they were not directly elected. Instead, people voted for domestic political parties and politicians whose I MEPs parties, sit in man. the European Parliament under the EPP banner. To illustrate this point, let's take a look at one of the best known MEPs, We also have a Pirates Party in Nigel Germany, yeah, Farage. but nobody votes for them. In 2014, Farage retained his seat in the European Parliament, but when voters in the southeast of England seat voted him in, they did so as a UKIP member. However, when Farage sat in the European Parliament, he sat as an EFDD member, as the UKIP party were a member of the Europe of Freedom and Direct Democracy Euro Party, all while retaining his UKIP domestic no, credentials no. and while being able to defect from the EFDD. In essence, these Euro parties are governing alliances. Different parties sit under the same umbrella and the same <laughs> name, yet each retain their individual autonomy and colours. So, having explained that, let's turn back to actual pan-European political parties. Because these pan-European parties are radically different in that they are far, far more than just a grouping of pre-existing political parties. In a very simplistic view of things, while Euro parties are bottom-up affairs, these pan-European political parties are top-down. The umbrella comes first and then leads to the creation I can't of individual sub-parties for each member state. Therefore, pan-European parties are far more centralised at the European level, looking at issues through less of a country-specific lens and more of a transnational European one. Looking directly at Volt's policies on climate change, we can see this in action, with, as we mentioned, them pursuing an EU-wide carbon tax to be used alongside EU-wide projects and initiatives. And speaking more broadly, there certainly are a number of issues that transcend national borders, most notably for Europe being that of migration. As we've covered in a number of videos on this channel, Europe continues to face a migration crisis, with thousands making or attempting to make the treacherous journey to European soil. On paper, the EU has a policy to handle it, targeting and shutting down the routes and relocating refugees throughout European member states. The issue being that this plan hasn't turned out as expected, with many southern European countries such as Italy, Greece and Spain all facing a disproportionate burden when it comes to handling the influx. In turn, the argument goes that the only way of truly dealing with this issue Jesus, is on man. the European level. Not just through political wranglings between French and German MEPs, but by a more European-wide, European-led group. Or at least that's how the theory goes. In any case, Volt isn't alone on the pan-European stage. Democracy in Europe movement 2025, a pan-European party set up by the Greek finance minister during the height of the sovereign debt crisis, similarly campaigns on a Europe-wide level, mm. pushing for a European Man, this is actually deal, me think, dude, advancement in tech sovereignty. And I have the most connection to Volt. Dude, the Valomat actually is making me think about my vote, man. Well, that was interesting, huh? Do you guys still like me now? How many viewers uh, are now unsubscribing? Because I don't believe in their political views.